the great thing about Fire Monkey is I can develop this and prototype this on Windows, and then it'll work across all platforms. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. We're gonna demonstrate this on Windows, and then when we're all done, I'll show you how it works on other platforms, and I'll explain the other differences as we go along. So this is a simple application here. I'm gonna run it. Like any application, you enter data on it. So actually, I'll just use this button here. It put some random data in here for me, and I'll put a little hello world. And we close it and relaunch it. All data is gone. Okay, that's what we're used to. On Windows, it's not a big deal because you've put a Windows application in the background and go to other applications. Windows is never going to put it out of memory. Okay, on iOS and Android, on the other hand, that happens. Uh, quite frequently, it seems like, for me at least. <laughs> but the application gets pushed out of memory because that's the way the Android OS works and the iOS OS works, is that when the OS, the memory is needed by a foreground application, it pushes the background applications, the oldest background applications out. It has a, some formulas it uses to determine what's gonna happen. So how do we fix this? How do we deal with this so that our users don't have to keep re-entering their data or don't lose their state or their place inside your application? That's where state state comes in. So on the form, we have an event, a new event here called on save state. Now I've already got an event handler in here for me. Um, that's what it's going to do is going to clear the save state stream. So save state is the new property that all T forms and T form 3Ds on the FireMonkey side have. And this is where you can persist the state. So you always want to clear the stream first because if you don't, if the stream already had data in it and you just write more data, your stream is just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And you only ever read the original data out. And that's just a mess. <laughs> so clear your stream before writing to it. Then we're going to create a binary writer here, pointing it to the stream, and we write in the data we want to store. So in this case, I'm writing in the edit, the memo, edit, edit. Okay. Now on create, we're going to do the reverse essentially. First, we're going to check to see if the stream has a value in it. Uh, if it doesn't, we don't need to do anything. And I'm adding a little label here just for my information purposes in a production app you probably wouldn't need to do this but this is basically how you would determine if you're restoring from a save state or not okay so then we create a t binary reader point it to the stream and we read these values back out now it's very important that i read them out in the same order i wrote them otherwise we'll get an error message because it's reading it from the stream. And so if I tried to, let's say I wrote an integer in there. So let me show you here. These uh, write method has a lot of overrides. So there's lots of op op different options for how to what you want to write here. If you wrote a single and then tried to read it out as a string, you would get an error message. Okay. So it's important that you keep these in the same order on both sides. And then when you make changes to them, don't rearrange them orders in future versions. Otherwise, you'll have problems. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this now. And we'll put some random data here and I'll include a hello world. Then we close it, reopen it, and look at that, all of our data is still there. Okay, so this is the low level use case. If you're gonna be typically wanting to persist all the fields on your form, you can do that. Uh, actually, I'll show you the helper here. First thing, before I do that though, a couple things. Uh, right here is where you can change the storage path. I'm not doing that. Uh, you can change it to the home path and that would store it inside um, your home path, which for Windows, you can look at the documentation. It's like the app data folder or something like that. So this way it will make it permanent instead of transient. So if it's in the temp folder, it can get wiped away uh, by a cleanup, util cleanup process on the OS, for example. Uh, or on mobile devices on reboot or different things like that could cause the temporary folder to be cleaned up. You can also change the save state dot name. And like I said, that allows you to store multiple uh, types of data, multiple data bundles in there, if you will. If you want to have a better understanding about how save state works, the save state, if you go to here, it's defined in FMX forms but you want to dig into the FMX platform defines the save state service, which is then implemented in for Mac 
iOS, Windows, and Android. So if you come in here and look, you can see that when the storage path is empty, on Mac, it gets temp path. On uh, iOS, it gets the temp path. On Windows, it gets the temp path. And then on Android, this is where we have that slightly different behavior. The transient state is in the native activity, okay? So the activity in Android OS maintains that for us. So on the, if you don't specify a storage path, it's just gonna put it into the activity and then the activity keeps it. That's why on Android, if you terminate the activity, terminate the application, then it loses that transient data. Whereas on iOS, Windows, and OS 10, it doesn't, okay? So I'm gonna take a look at this, show you this uh, helper here real quick. So this helper was created by Daniel Spinaretto, and I probably said his name wrong, I apologize. The, what it does is it introduces, it's a, uh, a class helper for T Custom Form. And how it works is it introduces a save form state and a load form state to the form. And so here's an example application. All you have to do is either call load form state on the constructor or in save for state on the save state event handler, and it will go through all the controls in the form and persist them with JSON. Okay, so I tried this out, it seems to work. I'll show you an example of it real quick. You may want to change the behavior slightly, or you may be happy with the way it works, but I'll show you this how it works here on uh, Windows. So put Jim McKeith, and we'll say Android is my preferred OS. Close it, relaunch it, and there we go. It's persist all the data just with two lines of code. So uh, the default, since we didn't change the default storage location, is the temp directory. Here's right, here's right here. So this was the first application I showed you here. We can take a look at the data here, and we can see it's just storing it out there with binary separators. Uh, here is the one that is the using the helper. It's in JSON. You can see here. So one thing you'll notice here is group box one. The data was your preferred OS. This wasn't something I typed in. So this is going to persist the data that's already there as well as data the user's input. So again, you may need to tweak this or make some slight modifications to it. Uh, essentially, this is is a a nice utility you could take advantage of and uh, definitely shows you some ways you could be more efficient with this. Okay, so uh, here's the default, like I said, default storage location on Windows. Let's take a look at this on some other platforms. So here's the helper version of the app running on uh, Nexus under Marshmallow. I'm going to put my name in here, Jim McKeith, preferred OS Android. And I'm gonna tap the home button here and then launch it again. And we see that my data is still here. Now at this point, the activity never left memory, okay? It was still running in the background. If I uh, come out here and swipe to dismiss it and launch it again, we see now it relaunched, we saw a splash screen, but my data is not here. Now the reason my data is not here is because I terminated the app. On Android, if you terminate the app, you lose the data. Now, so the way I can test this is I can go into developer options. So develop, settings, developer options, down here at the bottom, it says don't keep activities, or right here in the middle of the screen. You scroll down to the bottom, it's almost at the bottom. Yeah, it's the very bottom of the uh, scroll. Uh, turn this on. And so what this does is this causes the activity to be destroyed as soon as your user leaves it, which then triggers the OS's persistence to persist that, okay? So now we'll come back here. We see again, we've got the splash screen, but my data's here, okay? So the save state event fired and the data is persisted. If I do hit the back button from here, for example, though, that terminates the app. So if I bring up save state again, we see that it's lost it. But with that, I put my names backwards. You'd think I know my own name. Uh, with the setting here though in settings, switching over here, switching back, splash screen relaunches the app, restores from save state. All right, iOS, and or, uh, iPad here. So I launched it, you saw a splash screen. Let's put my name in here. Jim, last name, Keith. Preferred OS, we'll say iOS this time because hey, I got lots of devices. I can prefer all of them. 
come out. Uh, if I tap to launch it again, notice we didn't get this flash screen. Okay, so it was still in memory at that point. But if I double tap on the home screen or the home button and then swipe to dismiss and then come back here and we launch it again, we saw the splash screen and the data has persisted. Okay, so this one, uh, iOS, it does persist it even if you do terminate it. But then if you are leaving the app in the background and it gets pushed out of the memory, which happens to me all the time on my iPad, it restores it and keeps the state there for you. So very, very useful, very handy on the iPad. Here it is running on OS 10, Jim McKeith, and we'll say OS 10 just to make OS 10 happy. And we launch it again. And there it is, restored my state, persisted it for me. Uh, if you want to find out where it's located at in here, just check out the, or where the file is stored at, it's shared location. Check out the help docs for git temp path and you can see exactly where the file is stored and take a look at it.